African leaders who robbed their countries blind. Number eight, Idi Amin. Idi Amin controlled Uganda for just eight years, but during those eight years, he managed to become one of the most brutal dictators in African history. And not only was he violent and genocidal, but he was utterly insane as well. Amin redirected most of the country's money to himself and the military. He was fine with leaving the rest of the country in extreme poverty. Amin took so much of Uganda's money for himself that by the time he was finally kicked out, inflation had gone up 1,000%. As bad as that sounds, this was really the least of Uganda's problems while this lunatic was running the show. When the United Kingdom broke off diplomatic relations with him in 1977, Amin decided to take it as a personal victory. He gave himself the title Conqueror of the British Empire. This was added to his lengthy title, which became His Excellency, President for Life, Field Marshal Al Haji Dr. Idi Amin Dada, VC DSO MC CBE, Lord of all beasts of the earth and fishes of the sea, and Conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general and Uganda in particular. We love Game of Thrones. He also claimed to be the uncrowned king of Scotland. That would be pretty funny if he hadn't also taken hundreds of thousands of lives. It was widely believed at the time that Amin was a cannibal. However, Amin himself said that humans were too salty for his taste. He enjoyed boasting that he had his political enemies in his freezer. Number 7. Omar al-Bashir Omar al-Bashir was the head of Sudan for 30 years until his reign came to an abrupt end thanks to a coup. He wasn't a popular guy. Al-Bashir got elected in the first place because he most likely rigged the election. Then he ended up becoming the first sitting head of state to be indicted by the International Criminal Court. His time in office was filled with war, even though he vowed to end the civil war when he got elected, a civil war that had been going on for 21 years. Al-Bashir took advantage of the chaos to loot the already impoverished nation of all the wealth it had left. According to WikiLeaks, he sent $9 billion to a secret London bank account. Al-Bashir's big plan to help out Sudan and the entire continent of Africa was to create a space agency. In 2012, he said that if Africa could all come together to make their own space agency, it would liberate the continent from technological domination. He never really explained how that would work or how that would help. For instance, the ongoing civil war. This was either a desperate distraction or a sign that he was truly delusional and out of touch. That $9 billion probably would have helped. Number 6. Hosni Mubarak Hosni Mubarak was the longest-serving president that Egypt ever had. He ran the country from 1981 to 2011. During that time, he made a very suspicious amount of money. There's never been an official number, but he was worth somewhere between 40 and 70 billion dollars, according to experts. His massive fortune likely stems from corruption and bribes, as well as legitimate business activities. The money was spread out in different banks and properties all over the world. Usually, people who make legitimate money don't have bank accounts in three countries, including Switzerland. Corruption skyrocketed during Mubarak's reign as president. Rival politicians and activists who opposed him would be imprisoned without trial. He created illegal hidden prisons for his enemies. It became difficult to get a job at a university, mosque, or newspaper if you had views that he didn't like. It's not too hard to imagine someone who runs a country like this might be running some scams on the side. In 2011, Switzerland froze his bank accounts and the accounts of anyone related to him. A few years later, when Mubarak was out of office, a court convicted him and his sons of embezzling $17.6 million. The money was supposed to be used for renovating and maintaining the presidential palace. Instead, it was secretly used for upgrading private family mansions. Without presidential authority to keep himself out of trouble, Mubarak was sentenced to three years in prison. Number 5. Sani Abacha Sani Abacha was a Nigerian general who became head of state after overthrowing the government in a military coup. Under his rule, Nigeria made unprecedented economic advances. However, like the fictional Nigerian princes from the internet, he also stole a lot of money from the people. On the surface, things seemed to be going well. He increased Nigeria's foreign exchange reserve to $9.6 billion. He also reduced the country's debt by $9 billion and reduced the inflation rate down to 8.5%. That may seem pretty high, but considering it had been hovering at around 54%, it's actually amazing. All that was good. 
But Abacha was also involved in some majorly corrupt activities. Nigeria's main export is oil. When Abacha came to power, he took control of nearly all of it. The country made about 10 billion a year from oil sales, and 80% of Nigerian government revenue came from oil. Oil also turned out to be a great way for Abacha to make money. He siphoned some of this oil revenue right into his own accounts. That revenue equated to $4 billion stolen from the government. $4 billion is a lot of money in America, but it's a ton in Nigeria, where the GDP per capita was less than $3,000. Number 4. Dos Santos Family Jose Eduardo Dos Santos was the president of Angola for 38 years. And during those 38 years, he pretty much ran the country like it was his personal investment fund. Under his rule, Angola became one of the most corrupt countries in Africa. Even though most people in Angola live on less than $2 a day, Santos focused on other problems while he was in charge. Issues such as making himself and his friends as rich as possible. After the Angolan civil wars, Santos took personal control of various emerging companies and industries. He was making so much money that a leak exposed 400 companies involved in laundering it all for him. Corruption runs in the family. Isabel dos Santos, his daughter, was the richest woman in Africa at one point. Her net worth was over $2 billion, according to Forbes. However, they took her off the official list when her assets were frozen in Angola, Portugal, and the Netherlands. This is because all of that money came from her father's government scams. She currently owns a Portuguese company worth roughly $340 million. She's made the United Arab Emirates her official country of residence to avoid being shipped back to Angola and going to jail. Their family stole from their starving people. Check out our full video on the former richest woman in Africa and her corrupt family here. Number 3. Jacob Zuma Jacob Zuma, a former president of South Africa, is currently at the center of a vast and messy trial. He's facing criminal charges related to a corrupt arms deal in his country made in 1999. He's been in and out of court ever since. After all, it's harder to convict a former president than to lock up some random civilian. Former presidents tend to have pretty good legal teams. He's being charged with multiple counts of corruption, racketeering, and money laundering. It all goes back to the 783 payments he received. Those payments were most likely bribes from a French weapons company named Thales. Before anyone claimed corrupt dealings were going down on the side, the arms deal was very controversial. When he was president, Zuma spent billions of dollars on new fighter jets, helicopters, submarines, and warships. Many South African countries saw this crazy military spending as unnecessary, especially since the more pressing problem was that most of their people lived in poverty. He took a page out of the United States budget playbook and increased defense spending, even though they weren't at war with anyone. There have only been two convictions in over 20 years. Tony Hengeni, who was a parliamentary whip, was found guilty of fraud. He lied to Parliament about a luxury car discount from a company bidding on weapons contracts. Both were a bad look for Tony. Financial advisor Shabir Sheikh went to jail for 15 years after taking a bribe on Zuma's behalf from an arms company. What a lot of South Africans really want, however, is to see Zuma himself behind bars. Number 2. Teodoran Nguama Obiang Teodoran Nguama Obiang, nicknamed Teodoran, is the current vice president of Equatorial Guinea. He's been the vice president since 2012, which should be the first indication that democracy isn't going according to plan in Equatorial Guinea. He's the son of Teodoro Obiang, the de facto dictator of the country. When your dad runs the whole country, it's pretty easy to get a job. Teodoran has held all kinds of government positions, including Minister of Agriculture and Forestry, and second vice president. Some people think it's a position his dad invented for him. It's sort of like assistant to the regional manager. Teodoran is best known for his lavish and taxpayer-funded lifestyle. He's not super involved in politics, but he does enjoy renting super yachts and having parties with rappers on them. He also attracted a lot of criticism when he spent almost half a million dollars in one weekend in South Africa. How does one manage to spend so much money so fast? Well, champagne, two Bentleys, and a Lamborghini Murcielago can add up fast. According to American agencies looking for Teodoran, most of, if not all of his wealth, doesn't come from his official government salary. Most of it likely comes from corrupt deals with the oil and gas companies that control the country's lucrative reserves. The money could probably go a long way towards helping the actual citizens of Equatorial Guinea. Still, cars are pretty neat too. 
His spending finally caught up with him in 2007, when several organizations filed criminal complaints against Theodorn, accusing his family of embezzling money to spend on French luxury properties. For the next 10 years, authorities seized luxury cars from the Obiang family, including two Bugatti Veyrons, an Aston Martin, and a Ferrari Enzo. 25 luxury cars were seized and auctioned off for $27 million. In 2021, a French appeals court convicted Theodore of embezzlement, slapping him with a three-year suspended sentence. He'll never see the inside of a jail cell, but he'll have to pay a 30 million euro fine. Number 1. Mswati III Mswati III is the king of Eswatini and head of the Swazi royal family. He became king in 1986 when he was only 18 years old. Being an absolute ruler for his entire adult life hasn't left him with much empathy and understanding for the people in the country he rules. M. Swati currently has 15 wives and 36 children. He got one of those 15 wives by kidnapping her from high school, forcing her to marry him and live in the royal village forever. But what he's been criticized for the most is his absurdly lavish lifestyle. In the country's 2014 national budget, parliament allocated $61 million for the king's annual household budget. Meanwhile, 63% of his subjects live on less than $2 per day, and 40% are unemployed. His purchase of a Maybach 62 for half a million dollars also got him into trouble with the media. His solution wasn't to change his spending habits or reform anything. Instead, he made it illegal for anyone to take pictures of the car. In 2004, the king requested $15 million from the government so that he could redecorate some palaces and build some new ones for his wives. That same year, there were public protests against an expensive shopping spree that nine of his wives had gone on. They pose on Instagram with high-end Mercedes and Porsches, cars they are forced to keep in Dubai to hide them from the people of Eswatini. Meanwhile, Mswati doesn't seem particularly worried that his country has one of the lowest average life expectancies in the world. Click to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comments section who's the worst leader in charge right now.